And now it's time to move on to the demo and show you how to automate remediation of Splunk alerts with IAHU and G. And then we'll just go ahead and switch over to Mike Balzer and he'll be driving from here. Mike, take it away. All right. Thanks, Guy. Cool. So what we have right here is just a brief overview of what we're going over today. You can see I have a couple of windows open, but basically like uh, Guy had mentioned before, we'll be going over Splunk, Slack, and ServiceNow to remediate our oversized file alert. So you'll see here on the bottom right, I actually have a window open up. It's actually an RDP session into our currently monitored node. And this is actually where we're going to artificially create some log files. That's going to kick off a Splunk alert that has detected those oversized log files. And then the Yahoo NG will run our remediation workflow to delete those log files. So let's go ahead and create those log files artificially. And in just a moment here, you'll see them start to populate in our monitored folder. So they're coming in right now, as you can see. These are rather large. So in this case, they're you know, above 150 megabytes. And they're still coming in in a second. And we'll actually see over here on the left-hand side in our Slack message, once we've resolved the alert, we'll actually see a message here in just a moment. But for now, let's just wait for these logs to get deleted and for our workflow to kick in. So you can actually see up here on the top left under running workflow on our Yahoo Live menu that we're actually running our workflow and they're actually getting cleaned up right now. So in just a moment, we should actually have a message on Slack letting us know that we have remediated that alert. Cool. So now that it's done, you can see it created a Slack message to notify us of completion. And of course, this message can be customized in your instance to meet any kind of alert that's necessary for your organization. But in this case, we're interacting with Splunk and ServiceNow. So this is how we built it out. You can see first off, we have a link to our ServiceNow ticket. We also have a SID for our Splunk alert. Uh, we also see a host name, the monitored folder, the folder exact file path with the previous file size and our size log file count. And finally, this is sort of the meat and potatoes here, right? So this is the big message saying, all six oversized log files were successfully removed. We can also see that our new file size is 25 megs, saving us around 942 megabytes of space. So almost an entire gigabyte of space saved through our automatic remediation. It's pretty big. Cool, so let's go over and open up our ServiceNow ticket just to get you an idea of what our record keeping looks like. So I'm gonna actually move this over here on the left-hand side and the right-hand side so you can see how a lot of the information between ServiceNow and Slack is mirrored. So it's all about record keeping for us. And you can see we've done really good record keeping in the ServiceNow ticket. We have a couple of key features here, uh, like our number, our category, subcategory. We've actually pulled our CI information with the host name. We can see it was resolved. And we're also seeing here a short description, which is very similar to what you saw in this Slack message here giving us an idea of what we did and where the monitored folder was. So if we move down to our activity section, you can actually see, I call this the play-by-play -play section, but you're able to see when our alert started. So this is what kicked it off. And you can see even here looking at the time, it only took us about 15 seconds from when the workflow was triggered to when we were successfully able to confirm that we removed all those oversized log files. So really quick, very agile, Let's go over to finally our Splunk side. So we're gonna look at any triggered alert. So once I reload, we should see our alert. So this is the Splunk alert that of course fired when it noticed that there were those oversized log files. We can go in a little deeper to the Splunk alert by hitting view results. And we're able to see the actual event data. So it's important to note here that the data here in the Splunk alert is able to be parsed into our Yahoo NG workflow. Uh, in fact, we'll grab this type of event, so folder size of alert, the node information and the monitored folder information directly into our Yahoo NG workflow. And this is actually how a Yahoo NG knows where those files are to be deleted. So a really important point there. And so those are the big two, three pieces of our kind of front end. Now I can show you underneath the hood of what our actual workflow looks like on the Yahoo NG side. So we're gonna go into our workflow designer and I'll give you a brief overview of how that works. Oh, 
Okay, so this is our workflow overview. I'm gonna to scroll to the top here. So essentially this is uh, kind of the meat and potatoes of the Yahoo <laughs> platform. This is where you're able to create and design your workflows. But essentially it's a flow chart or a whiteboard that contains pre-built activities that comprise of our workflow. And you can even see here on this left-hand side, this is what we call the activities toolbox. And this is where we're able to drag and drop activities into our workflow. So for example, I can go ahead and show you one of our pre-built Splunk activities. So this is a few of them that are already pre-built and ready to go. If we wanted to add this into our workflow, we'd simply drag and drop it. It's in there and simply configure with this configuration button, enter in a few specified pieces and you're good to go. And you can actually see here on the top, we actually use one of our pre-built activities for this workflow today. And then also on the bottom left-hand side here as well, this is our control section. So these can be used in a workflow to give you a bit more control of how the workflow operates. You can see that we're actually gonna be using a while and an if else branch control in our workflow. And essentially it's a way of giving you more control over the flow of the workflow without making things too complex. So we're trying to keep things simple without having to write any code, but also giving the flexibility of these sort of program, programmatic like controls. So let's actually dig into the workflow itself. I'm gonna give you an overview of these activities and focus on a few of the more important ones. So of course, an important one is our first activity. And this is us essentially grabbing information from that Splunk alert or parsing information. And you can see as we continue on, like I showed you in that Splunk alert a little earlier, we're grabbing the host and folder path from that Splunk alert itself. We're continuing on and creating a ServiceNow record. So again, this is the start of our ServiceNow record creation. This is helping us with our record keeping. So you can see a couple of key values that we've inserted here, like urgency and state. We've also dynamically inserted our host information from our Splunk alert into the configuration item field. So that's also another important thing to mention. You can also see here another important activity is our result set filter. So this is sort of the meat and potatoes of how we're filtering out what kind of log files we want to delete. So we're able to use SQLite statements to return results based on our query. In this case, you can see we're querying files that are over 100 megabytes, and we've included ones that have a log extension. So if you remember when we were in our RDP session, it wasn't just log files in that folder. There were a few other kinds of folders and files, and we don't want to delete those. We only want to delete our log files. So this is how we're able to specify what files we want to delete. Continuing on, we're making an update to ServiceNow based on the results of our previous activities. And then really here, we get into the kind of meat and potatoes of the entire workflow where we're actually doing our log file deletion. So like I mentioned before, we have some control operators. So this is our while loop. And essentially what we're doing here is we're looking at how many log files there were first. So in this case, we counted there were six log files. So we're going to loop in this while loop six times. And as we go through each loop, one by one, we're gathering the file path of each separate log file, deleting them with this delete activity. And finally, we're actually creating a success or failure count based on if we were able to delete those files. So of course, there are some times where perhaps a log file is being accessed by another user, an admin, and we wouldn't be able to delete those. We wanna have a way to capture that in this automation case. So we're going through each time by each time until we get to six. In our case, we were 100% successful, so our success count will be six. Continuing on, we go into our ServiceNow get record to query our CMDB. This is the step that we're taking where we're trying to get the user of that node. So we know the information from Splunk of the EC2 instance information, but now we need to query the user of that node so we can send them a Slack message. So this is the start of that sort of process. You can see we're querying our CMDB with a few pieces of information. And then we're actually grabbing our host owner Slack ID. So of course this could be customizable. Perhaps you want us to send a message to a Slack admin, perhaps you wanted to send it to the user of the node itself, completely customizable to your use case. In this case, of course, we're sending our message to the user to say, hey, we were able to automatically remediate some of those oversized log files. Moving on to the 
final step of our workflow, you remember I previously said we had a success count of six, which is an important piece to recognize on this last stage because we're actually using the CFLS branch comparing the log file count to our success count. So in this case, if we didn't delete all six of those log files, then we would not go down this branch, we would go down our escalated branch. But in our case, we had six log files to delete and our success count equals six. So that's a big check mark, it's a go ahead, it's good news. We went ahead and resolved it and moved it on this side of the workflow. So this is our success side of the workflow. We went in and set a resolved message, which we then updated with ServiceNow. That was that kind of long description field that you saw just a moment ago. We also went ahead and created this Slack message. So this is actually the Slack message that was sent to us. And you can see here we're dynamically referencing variables, not only from Splunk, but from within the workflow. And finally, we're sending a Slack message to the user based on that information. So another thing to kind of mention here as well is it's a very simple user interface for this activity. You only have four fields you have to fill out here uh, and you're, you're good to go. You're sending a message to your user. Just to kind of quickly go over also the right-hand side of this workflow. So if you weren't able to successfully remediate it, I know Guy also mentioned that you could do manual remediation, right? So these workflows can be as customized as possible. If you want to make a workflow that's 100% automatic and have a fallback to a manual process, that's kind of what we're doing here, right? So if we're unable to delete all six of those log files that we counted, we can say that's no problem. We're creating an escalation message where we say, failure occurred. We're then updating our service now ticket with that information and then sending an escalation message again to a user or an admin based on that information. And that's the complete demonstration that I have for you today. Um, I just want to share one more piece of information. Uh, been here as a solution engineer here at Yahoo for about three months and this entire workflow including the Slack pieces, the Splunk pieces, the service now pieces, uh, it took me about two hours to build all this. Um, so that's a pretty powerful testament to the power and simplicity of this platform. And I think you can get really a lot done in a little bit of time. Thanks, guys.